Hey, it's Rob Snowett checking in with you from my office. We are joined also by Spotty, an orange goldfish, some mosquito fish, a guppy, and a really obnoxious crayfish named George. We're down here because the wife can't go to the office, so she is prioritized up in the kitchen, and we are down here in the fly tying room. I am still tying flies. You can pick shad flies up at any time. You can purchase them online. Email, text me, call me, whatever. We'll set it up. The fly shops are closed right now, so you might not be able to get your flies or tie material, so I might be your only chance. So the last podcast was an audio of my favorite fly tie materials that I've collected over the past 20 years. I'm going to show you them visually now. I've got them laid out. They normally would be all over the kitchen counter. So I'm going to start off with hooks. The first hook I use is a 7031 size 4. This is going to be for the majority of my 1-inch shad flies. I like that round bend on them, down eye, they're strong, made by Fly Shack. The next one are going to be the size sixes, size six. Those are going to be for smaller shad flies, 70, 31, quantity 100. The Snow White Damsel is going to be tied on 70, 51s, size 10. And then my Cattail Clousers are going to be tied on a size eight, down eye. 2x strong. So these are heavier, they're stronger, they're going to sink faster. They're just a good length for a small clouser when you don't want to buy saltwater hooks. Last are the shad jigs. I get these online. These are 1 16th ounce minnow heads and they are size 2, 1 16th ounce and I smashed that barb down. So this is where I tie in the tail and then the body goes up here. Five wraps of Estaz and you're done. I'm not buying these because they're jig shaped and I want them to ride a certain way. It's just I want this to facilitate getting the damsel or second fly down. So let's talk about thread and my scissors. Scissors are going to be using these. They're just lightweight, they're sharp. I can get in and tie things really quickly and not worry about. Getting uh, these lost, I can usually see the bright yellow somewhere. So these are my arrow tip scissors, fine point, I think, by Loon. They're a little beaten up. Going to use 6 Ot Uni Red for my Snow White Damsels. Going to be using 210 Denier in fluorescent red. Get that from Hairline. Going to be using 210 Denier Chartreuse. Lime greenish in a lot of my other flies, and then black in some of them, and then white, maybe blue, but it's going to be 6 out for damsels, everything else 210 denier. And I mentioned the podcast that I don't use the right bobbins because when I'm wrapping all the materials, they get hung up on the arm. The next video, I'm going to tie all these flies for you. So, how are we going to weigh our flies down? This is number 10 bead chain. This is going to be the eyes on the majority of my flies that don't have a bead on them. Size 10, get it in a big spool like this, or you can go to your hardware store and just get it cut from this. The number 6 is what I use for my damsels. Again, you can buy this at your local hardware store. It's also used for... Venetian blinds and some other things and ceiling fans. You can buy it in gold and bronze. If I could get a good deal on size 8 of these, I would. Now we're going to talk about actually weighing them down. I am going to be using 5.5 millimeter or 732's premium brass beads. That's what I am using in pink. I have a pumpkin orange. This really cool, pretty blue color. I've also got yellow. So these are the nice, smooth ones that you get from WholesaleFlyCompany.com. The black, gold, and silver ones are cut a little bit differently, and they don't line up as straight on your hooks. And they, all of these will pop off if you try to use them too tightly on a size six hook if the eye of the hook isn't big enough. So these are the majority of what I'm using. 
They're colorful, they're inexpensive, and we're not spending a lot of money on shad fly tie material because we're going to lose a lot of them. And you got to tie a lot of them. And the reason I'm wearing glasses is because we are under quarantine and I've only got uh, two or three pair of contacts left and I just don't want to risk them. If I'm not going outside today, I'm going to wear my glasses indoors. Call me four eyes. Body material. First up is going to be Stretch Magic. Get this stuff at your craft store. This is one millimeter. I prefer 1.5, but I didn't know where it was at the time of recording. It is clear. It is stretchy. You can wrap this over pretty much any hook and make a cool segmented body. If you tie down brightly colored thread and then wrap over it, it's pretty cool looking. So that's stretch magic. It's the other side. For my shad jigs, my preferred material is Estaz. This is Chartreuse BEST093. Might be hard to see with my giant bright lamp over us. That is Chartreuse. This is my preferred pink color, BEST097. I also like the white, BEST114. It's a little bit darker pink, BEST097. And I really like this color blue, BEST103. I picked up this blue at Whitaker's. This is a really cool color blue. Really good, nice, soft, Estaz. Really like this one. So that's what I'm going to use on my shad jigs for the head. Wrap it like that. I'm going to put these on the floor to organize later. Next up is going to be the head material for the shad puff. My preference is Antron. Medium to small Antron. I like hot pink. I got blue this year. I haven't tied with blue. I like the chartreuse. And I also like the orange. But I'm going to go chartreuse, pink, like blue, and then orange. Those are going to be the materials I'm using in the heads of some of my flies. You can also wrap bodies of these, but it's a little bristler, more bristly. It's crunchier. It's uh, The texture isn't what I like to use for the bodies on my shad flies. That's what I use for the heads. Next up is this stuff. I'm not sure what this is or who makes it. It's really soft. And I will use this for the bodies and for heads. Don't know the exact name for this chenille, but it is what I use in my little shad flies. My shad dart. It comes in this bright yellow. I've also got it in hot pink. There's an orange somewhere. And then there's this miscellaneous stuff. This is very similar. I really like this color chartreuse. Super soft. It's easy to wrap and segment. Nice clean wraps when you do it. I just don't know the name. I picked this up, I think, from Fly Shack at an Edison or Somerset show. Ball that up. Put it back in a bag. Next up is the flash material I use in the Snow White Damsel. I mentioned on the podcast, this is the original multicolored. And you can see how... Kind of wavy it is, kind of, it's not straight. This is what they have now. So you can see the difference. And what I do is I pull five strands off and I put them directly onto clips like this. And then I can just measure as I go. Just cut, cut, cut. So those are the tail materials or also body materials for the Snow White Damsel. One of these will go a long way if you're using five strands and you get eight Snow White Damsels per five strand pack. Next up is tail material that I pick up at Orvis. This is Saltwater Flash and Boo, I believe. It's thicker. This is SKU number 15680061. Use this on a bunch of tails in my shad flies. I have it in pink. Don't have the packaging for it. This one's a little beat up. And I will use these up to that little metal piece. And then there's the pearl white. So this is another material I like for the tails. I like them to be more straight, like this, than to have curve in them, like this. Tail material from Orvis. And I don't know the skew. This is 15680069. I don't know what this one is. You have to look at the catalog. 
Now we have tail material for the shad jigs. My preference is Flashaboo in 6901 extra limp. If that stuff was for salt water and was a little more stiff, this is the really wispy limp light stuff. This is my first choice. I branched out this year into 6921 fountain blue. I went with 6918 in pink. And notice it's just light and wispy. So that shad fly moves through the water like that. Not my favorite, but this is 6909 lime. I was hoping it'd be a little bit more yellowy lime, more lime in, like Sprite. And then this is the June bug. I haven't tied a shad fly with this yet. This is 6926 in June bug. That's a funky looking color. And I'll cut them like this. This, 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 this. You'll see that in the next material. You see how I cut that? So once I'm done with these, then I go up the plastic, I cut this off. I only have the length I need sticking out the bottom, so I don't waste it. And I can just go along that and cut out a match stick width with each time. That's flashy boot tail material. Let's talk about all the rest of the tail materials for several flies. I like polar flash, and I like the straight stuff. This is polar flash. 2033 Opal Mirage. This is my favorite color. I use this a lot. Tied a lot of flies with that today for custom orders. Next up is 2001 Flashaboo. I don't know the exact color of this. It's a silvery one. That's good stuff. Nice and straight. This is 2002. Not my favorite. This package is a little more... Uh, why would you call that? It's a little more... Thick, dense, bushier, brush-like. It's a nice blue one, not my favorite. I do not like this one either, 2003. I can feel the density and thickness when I, or maybe it's just me, but I can definitely feel a difference in the thickness between these two. The one I really don't like is 2004, this pink. I just don't like the way when you tie it in, it, it kind of just, See how it's all just sticking in different directions? I want them to be a little more straight. And you can see again how I cut out just what I need. 2009 is another really nice color. And lastly, this is Polar Flash Blue Rainbow 2014. That's from the Bear's Den. Go see Anthony up there if you're getting out of your house. I really want to drive up. Pitch with Anthony for big stripers, but I, well, I used to not have time. Now I've got time, but I'm stuck in a house. I don't even know if I'll be guiding for Shad soon. I've got a dude who wants to go out on Saturday. I might do that. I'm going to stay 20 feet away from me, dude. All right. That is it for those. I forgot to do some other body materials. This is from Cascade Crest Tools. This is New Age Chenille. New Age Body Chenille. So I use this in some of my flies. This is even crunchier than the other chenilles, but it's got little glitters in it. This is... SS Fancy. This is Klondike Gold. You can hear it. You hear how bristly it is and crunchy? This is White Pearl. Get these by the ski. Just, there's a guy on eBay. Your local fly shop may be able to help you. There's a pheasant tail stuck in it. That's why you don't wear socks in my office. The white. This is kilowatt red. This is really cool, bright pink, hot neon red. And last is winter run or steely blue. You can hear it. For you, what is it called when you listen to people eat online? It's like that. All right. And then we have, oh boy, the Korean scrub yarn. I use this material as a box. So my box from Hatch, my Hatch box. It's a really good box. I use it still. So this is Korean Scrub Yarn. My favorite color is going to be this in Chartreuse. And notice, little bristlies. These are soft. These line up really nice when you're trying to fly. They come in a scheme like this. So that is Chartreuse. Listen. This is another type of Chartreuse. This one doesn't line up as easily when you tie it in. This has got the more Mylar built into it. These are a little bit longer and stiffer. Don't know what the colors of these are because I don't read Korean. 
This is it in white. I got a lifetime supply. If I need to survive off a of fish in the next couple of weeks, I won't have a problem. This is it in silver, dude. Look at that one. Oh man, that makes a really cool fly. This is, I don't know what color, peachy, hot orange, traffic cone. This is hot pink. This is the other soft one that I like. I use pink a lot. Bunch of flies this morning. This is lime green. I tied with this this morning as well. This is purple. I got this last year to make flies for coho. This is a new one. I got this so I could tie up these poppers for Ira. This is a uh, kingfisher blue. You notice here, there's no legs on this one yet. Got it right here. He's going to be guiding in Maine if we're all still around at the end of the summer. Uh, I also have to mention this. No, this is a more orangey one. This is more tangerine orange. And then we got this like egg yolk, stiff yellow. So those are body materials that I use. And if you know where my hatch, so you got my hatch big sticker. If you know where my hatch bottle opener is from the Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival, please let me know. Now let's talk about ostrich plumes for the Snow White Damsel. Let's go with uh, dodgy to nice. So this one uh, has nice length to it. You can see, I'll pull out one here. These have a nice width to them. They're just not the color I like. They're a little soft, they look a little damaged, but you can see I've used this whole side. Getting better, look at this dye job. This is really nice chartreuse, straight stiff ones. They got a little bit of black in them. I tied a bunch with these this morning. And hey, you want about this length. So what you can do is you can figure out the length of them all, like giving it a haircut. There you go. These two are the longest ones. Cut five of those out, six depending on the width. But that's a good dye job. Here's a, a not good dye job but it's got nice width to it. You can see where I cut around by the different lengths. This one's really nice, super long. Look at those nice webby fibers. That's what's gonna make a nice bushy dense tail on a Snow White Damsel. This one, woo! This is the favorite of what I have now. This is really long. Nice and thick, brilliantly chartreuse green. So when I have a client fishing one of these 30 feet away, I have clear enough water, I can see it. You see when that fish bites it and it gets chomped, and I can yell set the hook. You gotta teach people the, what set the hook means. A lot of people don't know that. And last, I'm gonna show you those gorgeous plumes I got on eBay for making shrimpy Snow White Damsels. Look at these. I'm like a showgirl. These things are beautiful. If I could get fly tying ones this big, I'd be a happy man. I think that sums up Shad fly tying materials. I'm going to sit down and tie them for you next. And this will all help us just get through the 2020 coronavirus thing. So if you want to go down the river and fish, you can self quarantine that way. Stay away from other cars, other people. Don't be licking your shad flies and handing them to your friends. But you can go out there for the meantime. As of now, I still think we are at the bottom of the shad graph. If it's a bell curve, we're still down here. I'm not excited yet. There's not a river full of fish. So that's it. Rob Snow White, Fly Fish Consultant. My preferred materials for shad flies. Oh, and here's the spoon. This is not the spoon that works. But if you want to solder a spoon with a hook. That's what they look like. Thank you.